Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everybody. I have an interruption already. The phone, the cat. I know. Here's the interruption. <laughs> this week, I created like a kids art kind of corner. The inspiration behind it was the poor kids um, haven't been to play school in school since December. And I wanted to kind of do something like fun and I can't homeschool. Thankfully, I don't have to homeschool and my heart goes out to anyone who does. But I thought I would chip out and in my bubble, my niece and nephew, Jack and Lily, I thought I would create like an art corner because hands up who remembers doing art on a Friday. And I thought I would bring that back. There's two main DIYs in this. I've got an Ikea makeover of all of the arty bits and the easel um, because I'm gonna keep them in my house and I wanted them to look cute. Um, and I pass the time painting it. And I also have an apron DIY. So if you wanna learn how to sew a kid's apron from drop cloth, I'll put time stamp stamps for both of them below. And we get straight into the video. Here is the inspiration for this week's video. As you can see, Pearl Lily has a plastic bag as her paint apron. So I wanted to give this a little easel. Actually, all of the bits are Ikea. I did an order, I got one easel, I got the roll of paper, I got the paints, the stool, and a cute little, it looks like a toolbox. I'm actually gonna use it for myself. But I wanted to give this a little makeover because I am going to be keeping it in my house for them and I wanted it to look pretty too. I am starting, as I do with every project, with a good clean. As you can see, this got a little bit of love before I tackled this job. That kids paint, I think you would call it, is really easy to get off a damp cloth and it wipes off. So I'm just giving it a good clean and then I'm gonna follow my prep, prime and paint. Um, three golden rules when it comes to painting a piece of furniture. I did prime this because the wood was quite um, porous and everything I used was already in my stash so it kind of cost me nothing to give these a makeover so I primed everything I gave it one coat of primer and then I used Faro and Ball paint that was left over from my kitchen which you're gonna see and this was really quick to paint. I painted it like in an afternoon and then I just touched up the top coat the next day. Just make sure you allow it to fully dry between coats but I was like painting this in the house where it was quite warm with the heating on and yeah I had this done in like an afternoon. As you can see, there wasn't a lot left in the tin of paint, but you will be surprised, a little goes a long way. This was left over from my kitchen and I actually still have a dribble of this paint left over so I can keep in case I need to do any touch-ups in the kitchen or on this. I love this colour because when it gets used and obviously paint, it's there to be painted and um, the kids are going to get the paint on it. I think it's a nice base colour so when they do get paint and they like draw on it and things like that, I think it's going to look quite cute. It'd be a nice a base colour for all the colourful other colours <laughs> to go on top. I also painted the matching stool in the same colour. I just think it is the cutest little stool ever. My niece is actually too small to kind of use it to sit on when she's painting, but she can use it to stand on so she can reach the top of the easel. To get rid of the red paint on the shelf, I had some leftover like stick on vinyl, is that what we would call this? I think it's the DC Fixer stick on vinyl. I had this in my craft stash, I think from a couple of years ago. You might remember it from like a tray table that I did. So although I have measured this house, 
I managed to make a mistake, which you'll see. Um, even though I took the care to measure, I think I have lockdown brain. I managed to cut it too short, so I just cut out an extra little piece. And I just stuck this on and used a gift card. Um, it's handy enough. It's not like the vinyl from years ago um, that you would get loads of bubbles. So I just used a gift card to smooth it out and it was grand. As you can see, the little piece at the end, that's where I made a mistake. So even though I measured a few times, I still managed to cut it too short. I also gave this little craft box a little makeover. I think it is so cute because it reminds me of like a toolbox. I could probably fit some tools in here, but perfect for crayons, colour and pencils. And like if the kids are just getting creative at the kitchen table, you can just pop all the bits inside and it's handy to just kind of tidy up, throw everything into the craft box and off you go. So here's a look at the setup and I will show you next how to make an apron. I'm going to be making an apron from drop cloth fabric so you know that painters fabric that you can get in most DIY shops and because my niece is so small I'm going to start with hers and I'm going to use her little pinafore as a template so I'm measuring out an extra one inch all the way around and then the same at the bottom and then the sides and that's going to give me a base template for her apron. I have placed this on the fold so as you'll see when I cut this out it's on the fold and it will open up into one large piece. So I only have one section for the front because it is an apron and then I'm going to do a two ties on the bottom, two ties on the side and then I add a pocket as well. I used her straps as a guide. So the straps that were on her little pinafore, I used them as a guide and I just doubled the measurements and I cut out four pieces because I'm gonna have four strings. Once I have the four strings cut out, I'm gonna take them to the ironing board and I'm gonna show you how to assemble them. Now the drop cloth fabric is a bit on the fray kind of side. It's a bit fiddly, so you can cut them a bit thicker if you want to, um, because they are a little bit difficult to iron. I fold them in half and then I fold them in quarters. Basically, I fold it in half and then I fold the halves in on themselves, fold it again. That gives me the perfect um, fold to create the strings. And then I do a straight stitch down either side. I hope by looking at the, this video, you kind of get an idea of what I did. I also folded in the raw edge on one end of the tie and the other end you can leave the raw edge free because that is going to go inside of the apron. Now we're going to work on the body of the apron and I'm simply hemming all the way around so I'm folding over once I'm ironing and then I'm folding over a second time and I'm just pinning it into place and now we're going to place the ties or the strings into the body of the apron. So I'm going to measure down so that it's even on both sides and you'll see how I put the string in and then flip it over 
add a pin and I do this on both sides and I just measure down to make sure that I have both of the ties symmetrically placed and I'm also going to do that on the neck of the apron I'm going to add the ties in the same kind of place and when you do your stitch all the way around your apron these are going to be secured into the apron and you can also do a reverse stitch on each tie just to make sure they're really secure. Now mistake number two of the day is coming up. Uh, you'll see now I melted my measuring tape and I'd love to say that that's the first time it happened but it's not. Normally if I'm not melting the measuring tape I'm cutting it. <laughs> Another thing to note as well, ties may not be practical for young kids, um, which I kind of realised as I made it, but I know Lily is kind of fine when it comes to the strings, but Velcro might be better for kids, especially around the neck. So if you are making this for like a younger child, maybe consider having Velcro instead of knotting it. Um, but I purposely made these strings extra long so that they could kind of be loosely tied and that they wouldn't kind of be like a choking hazard. But just bear that in mind that for younger kids, maybe like a Velcro strap for the strings might be handy and safer. When I had made this, I realized, girl, this needs a pocket. We need somewhere to put the paintbrushes. So I popped a pocket onto the apron. So I just folded in the raw edge on three sides, found the center of the apron, and then I popped the um, pocket on and pinned it in place, checked it, gave it a little eyeball, make sure it was okay. And then I just stitched all the way around and don't forget to do a reverse stitch at the first and last stitch. To make another apron, so for my nephew Jack, he's much bigger, so I just extended the pattern to his measurements. So I just added a couple of extra inches to the length and a couple of extra inches to each side. And then I use this as a template. So once you kind of make one template, you can use that as a base for making other ones in bigger sizes. So that is my little art kind of corner and my setup. I have to say my niece used it more than my nephew. It's kind of not his vibe. He's more into dinosaurs um, and demolition. Um, she's a bit more on the creative side at the moment, but he did play with some chalk. I have to say the easel, I could probably use myself. Um, if you've seen, I threaded the paper so the two of them could use it at the same time and I just used, they're actually woodworking clips that I had on top and um, so you can thread the paper around so you can turn it into like a two person painting thing instead of buying two of them because you don't need to and um, so you can have one either side if you want to hack it like that so you can actually use like hair clips like jewel claw clips and um, big paper clips or if you're like me, good old woodwork clips. One of the things I think I've been finding throughout kind of this lockdown, um, especially because in Ireland it's it's gone on a while now, um, and we don't kind of have like an end date, which fair enough. Um, but the one thing that kind of gets me through, and I noticed the kids were a bit more, how would you say, not engaged, but they weren't as bored when I had the old creativity set up. So I did write a blog post about how I use creativity for ease and anxiety. So I'll put a link to that blog post in the description. Um, if I remember, I'll pin it in the comments then as well. So if you wanna check that out. So I have noticed like they did seem a bit more calmer when they had something to focus on. Even if it was just for 20 minutes, half an hour, there is magic in art. There's magic in creativity. So even if you, everyone says, oh, well, I'm not creative. There's so many ways to kind of be creative. I actually seen in the park that I walk in, I seen um, guys going around with their cameras, like their photography cameras. And I was like, oh, I think I might do that. So whether it's gardening, photography, music, painting, drawing, even just organizing your house, bit of, bit of decoration, I think 
yeah, flex the creative muscle and I think you might feel a little bit better even if it's just for a short while. So that is my ramble for this week. Cheeky thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and if you wanna check out any other videos, you can just go to my homepage, click videos where you can find more. Um, I've uploaded a couple the past few weeks and um, so any new subscribers that have come on board, thank you very much and you can check out any older videos there. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye.